Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while since I've done a dedicated Reason tutorial video. Um, I tend to stream more these days, but I had an interesting question in my Discord server and I also saw the same kind of question on the Reason Talk forums. And it was just asking about what is the correct way or what's your favorite way to do audio side chaining uh, or any kind of side chaining in Reason. And I thought it was interesting because Reason, as with many doors, offers you a lot of different ways to solve the same problem. Um, and I just wanted to share the two methods that I tend to use. So we've got this basic um, loop here, baseline, arpeggio, and a kick drum. Okay, nothing too special. But what we want to do is every time a kick drum happens, I'm going to pull down the volume on the arpeggio and the bass, and then get that kind of classic, you know, pumping, ducking sound uh, that's really prevalent in electronic music. So to begin with, I'm going to go across to the master section. And this is normally where you would put things like uh, reverbs and delays. Um, so they would go out of the uh, send into the device, back into the return, back into the mix. Um, but I'm going to use it a little bit differently uh, in this instance. So we'll start by creating a spider audio merger and splitter. And I'm going to go from FX send 8 to the input here uh, of this multiplier. And this basically lets you take one audio source, send it to four places. Um, there's no reason you have to use send effect 8. Uh, I just like to keep 1 through to 7 reserved for things like reverbs and delays. And then just for consistency, 8 is like almost my sidechain channel. Now, if we go across to the arpeggio and the bass, you'll see that they have sidechain inputs here under dynamics. So we can go from the spider into the arp, and then from the second set of outputs into the bass. Uh, and you see on the channel strip that the key indicator is lit. So that's just saying that it's detected a connection on the sidechain input. Next, I'm going to go to my kick channel and just turn on uh, FX8 send and set that to 0 dB. And then we'll turn the compressor on for each of the things that we want to sidechain. And just to kind of like maximize the effects so you can hear it, we'll set the ratio super high, threshold super low. Um, and then the very last thing you need to do is just make sure that insert pre is ticked. Uh, now the reason for that, if you look at the signal path, by default what it would do is it would apply your sidechaining and then go into EQ and then into inserts. So if you had like a distortion or something on here, all that's gonna do is it's gonna use the side chaining to kind of like decrease the amount of signal going into the uh, effects chain, which is not what you want. So with insert pre enabled, it's gonna do all of your effects processing, then the side chaining and then EQ. So if we press play, we should hear something happening. Okay, so straight away, we've got that kind of typical pumping sound. Uh, just to kind of recap over what we did. Spider audio splitter, FX send into the multiplier, and then breaking out into all of the things that we want to sidechain. Um, you don't have to use the built-in um, channel strip compressor here. Uh, if you were to use something like the master bus compressor, for instance, this has its own dedicated sidechain input. It would work the same way. Uh, and the same is also true for VST effects as well. So if we take something like Solid Bus Comp from Native Instruments, um, if you expand this programmer here, you get access to your additional inputs and outputs. If you see this green LED above inputs three and four, that means that it has a side chain input and you would use it in the same way. Um, now, obviously, if you run out of outputs here, say you wanted to side chain to like six, seven, eight things, you can just continue to add spider mergers uh, and splitters and just kind of chain them. So you go out from the last set of outputs into the inputs and you can repeat that as many times as you need to. Now, the second method that I prefer to use is using um, envelopes. And you might be familiar with this if you use anything like um, LFO tool from Expo Records or Duck by Devious, uh, Devious Machines. Um, and basically what it's doing is it's using uh, an envelope or an LFO or something like that to uh, control the gain uh, to simulate side chaining. So it's not actually using uh, an audio input on a compressor. It's just using a repeating or triggered envelope to uh, bring the gain down. But the overall effect is the same. And it has some benefits as well because it's a little bit more predictable and controllable. So I'm actually going to build a device in Reason that does this. You won't have to do this. I'm going to include a link to the preset uh, in the video description. But it's interesting to see how it's put together, just so, you know, if you want to sort of adapt it to your own needs or anything like that. 
But again, this is going to use the master section and the effects send uh, as we did with the audio method. So I'm going to start by shift dragging in a combinator. And if you shift drag in reason, it prevents any uh, auto routing, making mixed channels and stuff like that. And again, we'll go from FX send eight to input and then output to FX return eight. Uh, now I'm going to add in a sweeper, but we're going to set this to 100% dry because we don't want any effects processing going on, no phasing, flanging or anything like that. But what we do want to do is control the volume. And we can do that using the modulator section, which by default is set to audio follower, but we can change it to envelope. And then we can control the volume with the envelope. So every time this happens, it's going to push the volume up on sweeper. Now that sounds counterintuitive because what we want to do is gain reduction. And what we're doing at the moment is boosting the volume every time this envelope happens. If we flip the phase of the signal, what we're actually then going to do is we're going to boost an inverted version of the signal back into the mix. And then that's going to cancel out whatever you send into it. Sounds a bit complicated, but trust me, it's not. Um, so to invert the signal, we're actually going to use a synthesizer. Uh, it's one that comes with Reason called Thor. Uh, but it's also kind of like a toolbox that you can use to uh, process audio and CV. So because we're using it in this way, I'm going to disable the oscillator. I'm going to bypass the filter. Don't need any of that. And instead of going straight from sweeper back into the combinator and back into the uh, effects section, we'll go from output left to audio one, output right to audio two, and then audio out one and two back into the combinator. Now in the routing matrix, this is normally where you would set things like, you know, LFO to pitch, uh, envelope to filter or whatever. You can also say audio input one to audio output one, audio input two to audio output two. Now, if I was to just set this to 100, all it's going to do is going to be audio in, audio out. If I set it to negative 100, that's where you get the phase inversion. And then that's where you, how you get the uh, sound cancellation, which is going to enable you to do the side chaining. Now, the next thing we need to do is trigger this envelope. Now, if you work with Reason uh, native devices or rack extensions, a lot of them will have these gate outputs. Um, and these can base basically be used to send a little trigger or a pulse every time uh, a MIDI message is received and then we can use that to trigger the envelope so now all we have to do is just enable send effect a on the things that we want to sidechain and we should start hearing something happen if i press play now the cool thing about this is we can actually design the shape of the side chaining so if i double click to add another node in and i'm also going to enable sync and set this to one uh, quarter note or one beat. So this kind of length of time here represents one beat. So if I put this node around halfway, we're then going to get side chaining for half the beat back to normal volume. But the really cool thing is that even though we're just using one device, we can send different amounts of things to it and they'll be side chained by different, uh, different degrees. And the other really cool thing uh, is that unlike the audio method, if we were to add or remove channels, uh, you don't need to do any additional cabling. So say, for instance, I wanted to put these on a bus, call it sidechain, and I decide that I want to just sidechain that group instead. All I need to do is turn on FX send 8, and it should work straight away. So if you're using native uh, Reason devices or rack extensions, obviously you have access to this gate output. If you're using MIDI uh, on a VST or something like that, obviously you're not going to have the gate output. So what you need to be able to do is trigger this just using a normal uh, MIDI message instead of gate. Now, thankfully, we can actually do that. So I'm going to disconnect the gate output from the drum machine. And instead, we're going to go from this uh, Thor sequencer you'll see that we have these CV outputs and we're going to go into trig envelope. And then in this mod matrix, we're going to say, um, let's see, MIDI key. There we go. It's late. Bear with me. Uh, so yeah, we'll go MIDI key and then gate and we'll send that to CV output one by 100%. Now, if you look in the sequencer here, this combinator has its own MIDI channel. So we'll call this side chain. And then what will happen 
uh, is every time I press a key on my keyboard, it's gonna trigger that envelope. So uh, I could just program in uh, like a four on the floor sequence, make sure the quantizer's on, pre-recorder's on. Um, and then the cool thing with that, obviously, as opposed to uh, an envelope that just kind of cycles and repeats, is that you could drop this out for the last bar, take the kicks out, and then you've disabled side chaining uh, for that measure. And uh, yeah, that's basically how you build a phase inverting uh, envelope triggered fake side chainer. Uh, as I say, it's it's my preferred method to do this because you don't need to recable every time you add new instruments, um, and you've just using one device you can apply different amounts of side chain just by adjusting the the send level here. Um, there's probably more things you could do in the way of you know you could maybe route some of these macro controls on the combinator. Uh, to some parameters on the sweeper. Um, but for now, before I save this, I'm just going to delete these controls because we don't need them. Set this to one unit, and then we can basically just hide all of this away. And the next time I drag this effect into my uh, project, all I need to do is just hook it up to uh, send and return eight, and it's ready to go. So as I say, I'm going to include a link to this in the video description. Uh, if you find any kind of interesting variations on this or any cool tips or tricks that you discover, uh, do feel free to share them in the comments. Um, but for now, I hope it's been useful and I'll either catch you on the next video I do, don't know when that'll be, uh, or more likely um, will be next time I'm on stream. Again, I'll include a link to my channel in the video description. So I hope this is useful. Uh, let me know how you get on and I'll catch you guys next time.